the last lot three now and, and, and tea break. So I just want to talk a little bit today about oxygen technology, um, the life of where we've come from really as a spin-out from Oxford University to now um, having targeted NGS patents in, in the clinic. So you know, here, here today, the company was started in 1995 by um, Professor Sir Edwin Southern. So he may be more familiar with him as the inventor of Southern Rot many years ago, but then his work at Oxford University in basically using a similar sort of technology with the southern block was the first time that someone fixed a bit of DNA onto a solid surface and then managed to probe it and analyze it. And in essence, the microarray is that on a much, much larger scale. So he, he invented the fundamental technology around using microarrays, um, and that's really what set the company up. And it was initially an IP company, and it had an open IP policy um, to all the very, very large companies in the world. And then about 10 years ago, obviously, IP and patents have a lifespan to them, um, and the company needed longevity, so really the company then transformed from an IP company to much more of a commercial company. And now it's much more focused on delivering products and services, but primarily products, um, to over 60 countries worldwide. We're still based in Oxford, so we're at the uh, Oxford University Paper Science Park is our head office. Um, a couple of years ago, we bought a company in Cambridge called Cytosel. We also have about 50% of our sales in the US, so we also have a New York and a US uh, sales force. And, uh, and I guess, so from, from a spin out from the university in 1995, the Oxford University had a, um, a share holding within the company. And recently, um, literally about three weeks ago, we were purchased by Systemx Corporation, which is uh, a world leading in vitro diagnostics company, uh, a, a very large Japanese company that is now going to take us really from a spin out from the university through to um, much more uh, global presence. So, we have three main product um, areas one is the NGS product, which I'm going to talk a bit more about. Um, which is basically enrichment panels for capturing selective pieces of DNA from either the genome or from the tumor genome and sequencing those at respective depths to, to enable analysis. So as along with the panels, we also um, have the library preparation kits, which is um, where you take the DNA through to, through to the sequencer and those are all manufactured uh, by us, as well as kits for specific DNA. So some, some DNA is fixed, um, informing, um, and they have specific difficulties with those, so we have various kits for that. And then also, you know, as we've been hearing all afternoon, there's also the analysis of this data, so we also provide software to allow analysis of this data. Other than sequencing, um, one of the sort of core products, which is the, the microarray, which I say is Ed Southern's original um, founding of the company. Again, we have um, products there that are in such genetics, microgenetics, cancer, and pre implantation. And then again, um, the, the fish probes, which are quite an, an, a long standing bit of technology, but it's still very well used around the world in, in diagnostics. There's two main sort of streams that run through all of our technologies. One is hybridization. Ed Southern has always been you know, the founder of hybridization. So hybridization is involved in our sequencing products, in our array products, and in our fish products. And also, as you see on the right side here, customization. So not only do we have fixed products, um, but we also allow complete customization really of, of, of all of these three different different platforms. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about cancer. Cancer is a genetic disease, whether that's inherited or whether that's an acquired um, in, impact on your on the genome. And these these really come in five different different um, types: so translocations, deletions, amplifications, um, sort of small insertions, deletions and single base substitutions. And it's the single base substitutions that um, are the majority of uh, the variants, but not all of these variants are created equally. So we have specific drug mutations, which are the mutations that you really want to know about. They may give you a diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment. And there's a whole range of passenger uh, mutations, which are you know, by definition really there, they're just there for the ride. And you may not necessarily need to know too much about them. But the various mutations, you need to know what they do. So, for example, predisposition, we're all probably aware of the BRCA1-2 um, genes involved in breast and ovarian cancers and various others. There's also specific 
um, mutations in um, uh, here are lots of examples really in hematological space which are actually give you the diagnosis. So if you have specific variants, for example, in JAK2, you, know, you can actually make the diagnosis from that variant. There's also those that give you, you know, a good or bad prognosis. So there's specific variants in this gene that will give you a, a better outcome if you have AML, and um, another type of variants that will give you a, a poorer outcome. And of course, the you know, much more of the selection of, of drugs, or whether you're going to respond to a certain type of drug. There's, there's some very specific parents again that will guide you to certain therapies, um, <coughs> or, or guide you away from certain therapies that may not be um, particularly useful to you as a patient. And of course, this isn't science fiction. This is here. This is now. Um, there are now lots of guidelines, WHO guidelines, and for example here the the NCCN guidelines that are making recommendations that these variants need to be tested so that you can get reimbursement and they need to be tested by um, specific methods like sequencing or fish or combination of fish and sequencing. And these are continually being updated and, um, uh, and are being used globally now. So what's our, what's our approach to this? So we've, we've really focused on, on panels rather than whole genome sequencing. And we're looking at um, very specific panels that we can up to date, that are really the, the clinically actionable um, content that are within those guidelines, whether they be WHO or NCCN guidelines. So it's the reimbursable active content that we, that we really only focus on. Of course, as you'd expect, we're, we're based on hybridization, this is our heritage, um, and we, you know, we, we, we like the hybridization approach that allows us to really target all the specific genes that, that we want and all the specific areas of genes because there's some advantages in some really difficult um, areas of genes to target. And also we go for the right, just about the right size. So we're not too small, we're not looking at just single point mutations, we're not too large, we're not generating whole genome, and also we're, we're totally customizing it. One of the key things about developing diagnostic tools for, for oncology is really the application and how you use it, what's the sensitivity that you need. So we, in, in a somatic state, state we, we always target down to about 1% annual frequency. And this is important because not every every piece of cancer tissue that you get is going to be actually 100% cancer. So only a, sometimes a small fraction will be, will be cancer. And also within that cancer you'll have subclones. So you need to get a very low um, sensitivity detection. Um, you also need to be comprehensive to cover everything you need, and as I said, be robust to the type of material that you're likely to receive for the specific cancer. So here's just an example of one of the products that we've, we've, um, we've launched. So this is a sort of classic um, diagnostic algorithm for detecting myeloid-deliftive um, new patterns. So you first of all go down this route, you to check for this variant in JAK2. If it's negative, um, you go on to check for CALA. If that's negative, you go down to nipple. If that's negative, you might look at additional markers. So these are very specific, very defined, very diagnostic markers. And what we've done is put this into one specific test that you can do all these genes at the same time in a very rapid and cost-effective way. The other thing that we look at is really difficult genes. So this is this is a, a gene called CEP alpha, extremely GC rich and very hard traditionally to sequence. Um, this is the, in essence, the gene that we're targeting here, and this is the coverage map that we get. So the sort of height here is the coverage, and the amount of depth of sequencing that we, we obtain. And as you can see, we cover this, this gene really, really nicely. This is an amplicon-based method, um, it's a different type of approach to, to hybridization, and, and what you see here is that it's much more difficult to, in fact, really no coverage across, across some of the gene at all. And as I said earlier, this gene is important in giving you prognosis for AML. Um, so, so the poor prognosis of um, AML is a gene called VIP3, and it has internal handling duplications. And these are uh, pieces of sequences that are basically duplicated right next to it. Um, and again, in, in our approach <coughs> here, you can see these here, these sort of little blocks that are sticking out from the sequencing. And it allows us actually to get really um, Large on the sort of panel duplication, so we're detecting over 200 bases of um, panel duplication. And this is using, um, I think about a number, this is using short read, read chemistry. 
Um, so this is, this is pushing out sort of technology as far as we can go. And the other thing is really the sort of sensitivity. This is a, some example of a, um, a TP53 gene, a tumor suppressor gene here, and this is um, data from FFP. And what you can see here, this is a, a very small deletion. This trial base is deleted, and it's only occurring in 6% of the cells that we've looked at. And you can see that very nicely by eye, and of course the algorithms also detect those as well. And the, the sort of uniformity of the data across here allows you to detect that very accurately. So, maybe just to summarize what, what we do, where we've looked at, genetic testing is required, it's required now. Uh, there's various different approaches you can, you can go. You can go down a single gene, small, hotspot, um, specific mutation approaches. You can go down the whole genome approaches. And all these approaches have their own pros and cons. Um, the whole genome also you generate a large amount of data, it's very expensive. And there might be a lot of variants in there that you don't know what to do with. Um, and then passages and, and then may not be um, easy to interpret. And then, so we've kind of gone to this middle ground, middle ground which is looking at targeted, small, focused hybridization um, panels, which we're, we're saying below. That's where I'll finish and take any questions. Thank you.